Welcome everybody. It is week two in our spring knit along, which we're calling Slipping Into Spring. And we're featuring two projects that you were able to choose from that are incorporating slip stitches as the technique. So project number one is finished here on my left, and that is called On the Other Side by designer Lisa Hans and I'll put the link down below. These are Ravelry patterns and uh, she is a UK designer and if you go on her Ravelry page you will see lots and lots of inspiring shawls. A lot of them are featuring the slip stitch or mosaic knitting as we refer to it and she has one pullover so that is the second project featured in the knit along. It's called the Arrow Sweater. I'll bring these up closer to the camera. And how's everybody doing? Are you having a knitting afternoon on a Friday? So project number one is on the other side. And it is a triangular wedge shaped shawl, which measures Mine measures a little bit bigger because I've added more length, but uh, the original pattern is 72 and 3 quarter inches across the width and the depth is 30 and 3 quarter inches. Project number two is the Aero Sweater and this is knit from the top down with a mosaic pattern border across the yoke, stripes throughout the body. It's a two rows stripe in main color and contrast and at the very bottom it's hard to see in the dark gray but you'll see it clearly in my color when I get there is a pretty lace border and a twisted rib hemline sleeves are stocking stitch and twisted rib for the cuff so those are the two projects and I know some of you are well into your uh, shawl and some of you have made great progress on the sweater. We've been posting our progress pics in the event page, so feel free to hop on over there and have a look. And uh, it's just amazing to see the color combos. Some of you have chosen the same main color, but a different contrast color, and they look entirely different. So in this particular project, we are requiring two skeins. I have used a uh, color called Charity, which is that pretty burnished gold, and contrast color Commitment. These are 100 gram skeins of Alma, hand dyed, superwash merino, and single ply, and each skein is 546 yards. So that's plenty to do a nice big cozy shawl for the spring. And for the sweater, this is how far I am in my progress. For the sweater, it does require two skeins of your main color. For me, that is that hot pink, and that one is called Positivity. And my contrast requires one skein of Determination. Now that is what you would require for sizes extra small to medium. And if you're going to be doing extra large, two extra large, three extra large, you would need two skeins of main color and contrast, two of each. And if you're doing two extra large, three extra large, you need two skeins of contrast and three of the main color. So the needle sizes for this shawl project are 3.5 millimeter. I worked all the way through on a 10 inch straight needle, which is my preference but uh, many of you would prefer circular needles, I'm sure. And for this particular pullover, I have worked from three and three and a half to three and three quarter, just for the mosaic panel, then back to three and a half for the stripes, and the ribbings will be worked on at three millimeter. So that would be the needle size requirement if your knitting is right to gauge. So always take time to do your gauge when you're doing a pullover. On a shawl, it's not as important because the shawl can come out a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller and it'll still fit great. Um, so really all I can share with you about the shawl, 
Um, if you're just getting started, please refer back to week one video. That's where all the tips and techniques are included. And all I can really share is how much yarn I had left over from my project, equal amount of both colors. And I did complete an extra repeat to give it extra length. This, this week I've just wrapped it around the neck twice and then I've shimmied up a pretty um, shawl cuff in a copper with some patina. These are made locally. So that's how I'm finishing the shawl this week. Each week I'll show you a different version. So that just snugs up the tails of the shawl and then you can wear it more as a neck scarf. Because we're really not into the warm weather quite yet for spring. So the techniques that um, are used on the arrow sweater are a crochet provisional cast on, that's for your shoulders, so that there is no seam. I'll bring this up closer to the camera. And then make one right, make one left increases to get that pretty neckline shaping and short row technique. The uh, designer is suggesting the wrap and turn method and last week we posted the tutorial video for the German short row method which if you give it a try I'm sure you would agree it's much much easier and it's completely invisible you don't see any lumps or bumps or holes where you've turned and uh, wrapped and the body is worked back and forth till the end of the yoke and then joined in the round so the rest of the body will work seamlessly to the cast off and the sleeves are worked in the round, picked up and knit here. So there are two techniques um, I'm going to mention today about the body section which is worked in the round. One is the faux seam and the second is jogless stripes. So I will bring that closer to the camera and give you a demo. Um, one thing I want to mention about the um, underarm depth. Today in our knit along group in the store we were measuring the circumference around the arm because you may feel more comfortable adding a bit more length in the underarm section before you close and work in the round. It's important to do your measurements before you close and work in the round because once that armhole is complete there is no making it larger. So on this one, I added about another half inch in depth, which means I did another stripe sequence, two rows of contrast, two rows of main. And that will give me a little bit more ease of movement right around here. Because in her measurements, the sleeve circumference is quite narrow. And for each of the sizes, that will change to a different measurement. And you have to remember too that the body of the sweater, it's an oversized fit, positive ease, creates an oversized sweater. So you have to remember that the sleeve will be dropping down here. That's where you want to measure, not up at the shoulder. So here's a picture of the designer in, I think she's wearing the first size. And you can see it's quite a tight underarm circumference here. So be sure to take the time to measure your upper arm. Check the measurements for the opening there and add a few extra rows if needed. That also means you're going to have to add extra stitches when you pick up and knit the sleeves down. But we'll talk about that next week because I know none of you are at the sleeve section yet. So this is my version. I'm into the easy part now. I'm into the simple two row stripes. Okay, so that is the front section. So you can see there is some gradual shoulder shaping and that's produced by doing the wrap and turn technique. And then around the neck edge, the make one increases are two stitches actually from the edge and then the center section 
of the neckline is a backwards loop cast on. This will all be finished neatly after in my main color with an I-cord bind off. So my sleeve section is open and I've used the larger needle as the pattern stated to work the arrow pattern which is about 20-22 rows in the mosaic knitting. This will flatten out nicely when it's blocked and the arrows will be even more evident. I'm sure you can see them now. So here is where I have joined in the round. And this pattern includes a purl stitch right down the center and that's what we call a faux seam. The purl stitch pulls the two sides together and it looks like a seam but it's really just a little indent stitch. So one purl stitch on each side creates that faux seam. And as you know, working in the round when you're doing stripes, there is always going to be a bit of a jog from one row to the next. But because it's a faux seam, now it's upside down here, because it's a faux seam, I don't really think it's that noticeable on such a fine tension. So if you're happy with the look just with the faux seam, I wouldn't worry about doing the jogless stripe, but on the other hand, if you want to learn a new technique, then now is the time to try it. So I am going to show you how we do the jogless stripe. It's very easy. If you compare it to doing um, a wrap and turn, I'd say it's 10 times easier than that. And I will also post a technique video, which is probably even easier than me showing you on the camera. So the jogless stripe technique happens on the second round of your color stripe. So each color stripe is two rows. And where I am now, I would be knitting the next row in my main color, which is the hot pink, but um, just for demonstration purposes. We're going to pretend that we've already knit one round in the main color. So at the beginning of the second round, you're going to take your right needle and lift up the outside bar of the previous round onto the left needle. So there we have the lower stitch and the stitch from the row that's on the needle originally. And then all you're going to do is knit the two of those together in the appropriate color, which is for me the main color. And you're going to do that every second row of your stripe all the way through. And that will just balance out the side seams so that one color stripe will match with the beginning on the opposite side. So that's something to try. If you're working on the arrow sweater to pump up your knitting techniques and I will post a link of course in the video below because that will give you even more of a slow motion uh, technique. So just keep posting your progress pics. We do love to see them in the event page. Uh, color combos are always very exciting and just to see how the uh, mosaic work is shaping up. And now we do have a ballot box here and as you know each week we pick a random trivia question winner to have an extra ballot in the box and then that will be going towards the grand prize draw which is behind me. I didn't have it last week but I do have it this week. So we have a basket of squishy yarns. I can see some pom-poms in there, a pattern at the back. So there must be, oh, and some needles too. So there's a couple of projects, maybe two or three in one basket. So that is our grand prize. Okay, so our trivia question this week, feel free to answer in the comments, um, Google it, ask a friend, or just take a, a random guess. What do we call a group of knitters? 
We had the same question today in our knit along group in the store and one of them got it right just by guessing. So what do we call a group of knitters? We would call a group of crocheters a cachet, so that maybe will give you a hint. And um, it's just the same as what we would call a group of geese or a group of frogs or a group of um, a group of fox. So I'll let you work on the answer and then I'll uh, post later tonight who the winner is. And hopefully you're working on your um, progress report. I started a new one because I am on the sweater now. I finished off my um, first one, rewarding myself with a spa day this week. And that was for the shawl. And now I'm working on filling in my progress report for the arrow sweater. So, so far I've chosen my colors, wind my skeins is complete, and cast on day is complete. I'm certainly not at the halfway point, and I haven't had to do any frogging at this point, but things can change at any time. So that is everything for this week. Just wanted to check in with everybody, see how you're doing, hope you're having a great day, hope there's some sun in your area because we haven't had any today here and we're heading into our March break here in Ontario so there will be lots of activity and traveling going on but also lots of time to sit and knit. I'll catch you next Friday at um, 5 p.m. and that will be week three and I'll give you more of a progress report on the arrow sweater and I'll be posting pics in the event page in the next hour of some of the other knitters progress. Thanks everybody for watching. Have a great knitting weekend.